Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, and we're recording from secret location B today because our office building, they're doing some work on it, it's too noisy, so if the audio sounds a little bit different, uh, that is why. So we're gonna talk about video game journalism, we're gonna talk about the news that the escapist apparently fired their editor-in-chief, and talk about the changing landscape of video game journalism that things are changing very, very quickly and that there aren't going to be a lot of jobs for traditional video game journalists going forward unless they make their own job and some Kotaku writers are actually doing that. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that later. But uh, we've been covering the decline of video game journalism now for probably about two or three years. And as a site owner, uh, I think I've said before that uh, you know the ad rates are very bad. And a lot of these websites are laying off simply because they cannot afford to keep people on. Uh, throw into the mix the fact that a lot of these video game journalists cause problems for their employers with their hot takes. I mean, you know, look at uh, look at Kotaku being blacklisted by Nintendo because of their writers going out there and saying some stupid stuff. And I think it's one of those writers actually that went out to this other uh, website, started this other website. But, you know, they're causing problems for their corporate owners too. So it's really not worth the hassle for a lot of these companies to even have a video game news website, you know, especially with the problems and the declining revenue. And, uh, you know, you can just give your game to some YouTuber or TikToker or Twitch streamer and get just as much, if not more mileage uh, out of doing that than giving it to some professional video game reviewer on one of these uh, websites. But we're going to talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. Go out to Shop Clownfish. Dot com. That's shopclownfish.com. Link in the description. And back at Shadowbinders Volume 3, hardcover graphic novel. This is our first new Shadowbinders material in about 10 years. There are limited copies of books one and two left. Uh, for those of you who haven't purchased those already, we've actually had them for sale a couple times, but uh, some of you missed them. So yeah, you can, you can buy those as well. Um, let's talk about this. This is coming from uh, Film Stories. The escapist editor-in-chief fired, prompting multiple staff resignations. Video game news outlet The Escapist has lost several staff, including Ben Yahtzee Croshaw as its editor-in-chief, and he claims he was fired by the bosses. Uh, one of the Internet's most established video game outlets, The Escapist, faces a major shakeup as multiple members of staff have announced their departure. The walkouts were sparked by the sudden ousting of editor-in-chief Nick Calandra, who on the 6th of November wrote on Twitter, I was fired from The Escapist today. I have declined my severance pay and will not be signing an NDA. So apparently it was a pretty acrimonious split. I wonder if it has something to do with AI. A lot of this has, has something to do with uh, AI. In a follow-up post, Calandra added, I was let go for not achieving goals that were never properly set out for us and a lack of understanding of our audience and the team that built that audience. Uh, I think what they do in a lot of cases is, look, these companies look at the numbers and they're probably like, hey, we need to make X number of dollars per month. And in this economy right now, with the uh, advertising being the way it is, and it's not good, you know, it's gonna be very hard for a lot of these people to, to reach those benchmarks. But then that gives you an out. Like, well, I told you you had to make $200,000 last month and you made two. So we gotta get rid of you. Sorry, see ya, Nick. I have watched many colleagues let go for the same reasons. Today was my day. He said, I'm incredibly proud of everything my team and I achieved our last four years in the community we built together, figuring out next steps now and moving forward. Um, in the wake of the announcement, several members of the Escapist editorial team announced their resignation. Among those who've announced they're leaving the outlet so far are Darren Mooney, Jesse Galena, Amy Campbell, and Will Cruz. One particular high-profile departure is Ben Yahtzee Croshaw, who for years had hosted the immensely popular and influential Zero Punctuation series of video reviews. Today, I formerly resigned from The Escapist and Gamers, the company that owns the outlet. And they own a lot of these outlets, by the way, Gamers Group. Uh, they own the Mary Sue, too, I think. Do they own the Mary Sue? I think they might. Uh, Croshaw wrote in his own Twitter X announcement, I don't have the rights to zero punctuation, but whatever happens, you'll be hearing my voice again soon in a new place. So the loss of so many key staff will be a major blow for The Escapist, which has been going since 2005. It hints at a potentially unhappy relationship with Gamers Group, who purchased the outlet in 2022. 
I have heard horror stories from people that work for the gamers group that uh, they demand a lot. They really expect you to perform. Sometimes their demands are ridiculous, especially in this economy. Also, the owner of such sites as Destructoid and Silicon Era, Gamers was the very same media company that in June briefly put up a job listing for an AI editor. The role entailed generating some 200 to 250 articles per week using large language modeling software like ChatGPT. As for uh, Calandra and the rest of the uh, former Escapist staff, there are signs they're about to regroup elsewhere on the Escapist Discord server. Uh, they wrote, tomorrow we'll, you'll know more about what our plans are for the future, along with a live stream on Wednesday at 11 uh, Central Time. Our plans to go independent. We'll share more. So, yeah, they're not the only ones, right? Uh, so some former Kotaku writers launched their own video game website. And they own it this time. So they've started uh, Aftermath, a new website about video games and culture, probably politics. I mean, as long as it's just like video game focused, I don't have a problem with that. And if people's hot takes creep in every once in a while, I don't really have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is uh, video game journalists lecturing gamers. And I have a problem with tourists. I have a problem with people who uh, obviously don't play games. They don't understand gaming culture. They don't understand gaming history. And they're going to come in and lecture you, uh, the longtime gamer, on what's what. And usually it's more political than it is uh, you know, about gameplay or graphics or, you know, industry stuff or whatever. So this is coming from The Verge. Four X kotaku staffers are launching a new subscriber, subscriber-based video game news and culture publication called Aftermath. The website is live. It's co-owned by Nathan Grayson, uh, Jita Jackson, Riley McLeod, and Luke Plunkett. Luke Plunkett, I think, wasn't he the guy that got Kotaku blacklisted by Nintendo? I think he might have been. All Kotaku mainstays who helped shape its incisive voice before leaving the site for one reason or another. It's called getting fired. Oh, oh, no, no. Okay, this sounds like it's going to be exactly what you think. Aftermath is about the internet and everything that comes after, Jackson says in a recent interview. Uh, Jackson elaborates, I'm so interested in taking Aftermath and using the site to discuss the way that we live now and the way that capitalism and the internet have really intertwined and changed a lot of the ways that we find self-expression, the way that media is made, and the way that we consume it. Uh, Grayson says, I think video games are at the forefront of that. Plunkett says, the group wants to bring a combination of skepticism. So much of video games is filtered through PR marketing bullshit. That actually is true. Uh, but he's probably talking about Nintendo. But also speak plainly about issues, games, and communities. The hope is that Aftermath is interesting enough that readers bookmark it and visit directly a few times a day to see what's new, uh, whether that's things like reported articles, reviews, or even 500-word posts about stuff the staff sees they think is stupid. Um, <laughs> we really reverse, the, reverse engineered the idea of blogging. Uh, it's been a devastating year for games journalism, The Verge notes. Uh, the Washington Post shut down Launcher. Vice shut down Waypoint. Uh, there are layoffs and departures at Inverse, Fanbyte, GameSpot, Giant Bomb, of course, Gamers Group, and all of that. And uh, Plunkett in his July goodbye post wondered if he should have left Kotaku sooner. Maybe. Maybe he should have. So, like, look, the whole thing's imploding. This, this whole advertising-supported, uh, you know, hot take gaming journo blog bullshit that's been going on for the last 10 or 15 years. A lot of it was artificially propped up by venture capital. Um, and it's just not sustainable. Now, if these guys build an audience and they can charge that audience directly, if there's a demand for their content, I don't know how much of a demand there is, but if there is, then that's probably the way to do it. But I think the days of these like mega nerd sites are over. So I think we really are looking at the end of video game journalism as we've known it. I think we'll probably go back to, you know, individuals who are gaming fans, uh, building audiences, whether that's, you know, podcasts or uh, videos or, you know, through a subscription based blog. But as far as like having another IGN pop up, I don't think it's ever going to happen again. You know, having another Kotaku or another Polygon, I don't think that's going to happen again. I don't think it's sustainable. Gamers are incredibly skeptical. 
uh, these days. And I think it's going to be up to individual influencers and individual voices uh, to to give their opinions and you know connect with other gamers in that way. Uh, I think we are past peak nerd culture. We did another video on this, just in general, whether it's video games or uh, you know, tabletop games or comic books or you know the Funko Pop scene or any of this like celebrity nerd crap that kind of went hand in hand with these big nerd mega sites. It's over. You know, it's, it's definitely over. And if it's over for video game news sites, it's definitely over for comic book news sites, you know, and other smaller sites because it's just not sustainable. It just isn't. Everything changed this year. Everything changed this year. So I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.